With the pandemic and speaking out movement, many were released from WWE. This is Wrestling Up and here is every wrestler released from WWE in 2020. Keep in mind, this is about active WWE superstars and will not include the likes of Kurt Angle and Sting, who were not active in the ring when released. The beginning of this year saw the Good Brothers, Gallows, and Anderson in a good position in WWE. Heading into WrestleMania, AJ Styles was facing The Undertaker as they were paired with AJ. At Mania 36 in the Boneyard match, both interfered on behalf of Styles, but it was not enough to save him from the Phenom. Having been in the main event of Mania, it was thought the two were being regarded highly in WWE. Still in April, when company-wide releases came, they were let go. Anderson, Gallows, and their friend AJ were shocked. They blamed Paul Heyman as Styles revealed he found out Heyman wanted to release them. Now the duo have made the talk and Chop Mania podcast and have held events independently for it with friends. Also, they're signed to Impact where they won the tag team titles. Another two who were fired in April, Mike and Maria Kanellis, have not been too active since. They've taken every opportunity to come out against WWE, but have not really done much in their professional lives. Although they had an amazing run on NXT when the Revival moved to the main roster, Vince McMahon did not see them as the excellent duo they were. As he booked them poorly, on April 10th, they were granted their release. They abandoned the Revival name for FTR, going from Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder to Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler, before joining AEW, where they recently lost the tag team belts to the Young Bucks. Epico and Primo Cologne had a long run in WWE, but were never too successful. While there was a time when Carlito was in WWE that it looked like the Cologne family would be a force to be reckoned with, when he was no longer there, Epico and Primo would pair. Despite their best, they were never able to get going and were released in April. At the end of 2019, it looked like the authors of Payne Acom and Razor were about to receive the push they'd been waiting for when they joined Seth Rollins. Rollins was a newly turned heel, and it looked like the faction would be one to fear. On March 10th, it was revealed that Razor suffered a biceps injury, which saw him sidelined. After months of it looking like AOP may return, they were released on September 4th. They've not been seen since. Ever since the introduction of the Nexus, Heath Slater has been seen as the one constant, who has never received the best push, but has been consistently a part of proceedings. He was in different factions and won tag team gold, but was never a major player. Slater looked like he would never be released, but unfortunately in April he was. Since then, Slater has become a fixture in Impact. Working with Rhino, there he has been consistently a part of the company. EC3 was not on NXT long before going to the main roster. There, other than an ill-timed feud with John Moxley while the latter was set to leave, EC3 did not do much. He was involved in the 24-7 title picture but was not seen much on programming. He was released in April and has since gone to Impact, having a feud with Moose. He also made appearances in Ring of Honor and is expected to wrestle there. Diana Peraza was released from WWE in April. She was a part of NXT and was not really that active, but immediately after being released, she joined Impact, where she has done a lot more, winning the Knockouts title, but she eventually lost it to Sue Young at Bound for Glory. The two are still feuding as Diana was able to win back the belt. In a year of big releases, Elena Vega being let go came out of nowhere. WWE introduced a third-party ban, so talent were no longer allowed to stream on Twitch or take donations from Cameo. WWE warned that those who violated this rule would be fined, suspended, or terminated. This saw Paige and other stars speak out, with her mentioning unionization. However, Vega took it a step further, opening an OnlyFans for her cosplay hobby while continuing to stream. In the end, WWE terminated her. Vega posted on her Twitter she supported unionization, leading to many coming out in support. During their last run in WWE, Ryder and Hawkins were put together last year for WrestleMania 35, winning the Raw Tag Team belts by defeating The Revival. After losing the titles, they vanished from programming, then were released in April. Hawkins went to Impact while Ryder joined AEW. MJ Jenkins was a part of NXT after being in the 2018 Mae Young Classic. Still, she ended up being released in April, going to AEW, but it's uncertain if she signed a deal there.
Sarah Logan was a part of the Riot Squad as an up-and-coming star. While there appeared to be a Riot Squad reunion happening before April, she was released that month. Soon after, Logan announced she was pregnant with her husband Eric of the Viking Raiders. She and Eric now have a YouTube channel as well. Leo Rush was a promising superstar. He had a lot of heat backstage and was unable to do everything he wanted in the company, despite winning the Cruiserweight title over the last year. He was released in April and said he would retire, though he's been seen in Game Changer Wrestling and has been announced for a tournament in New Japan. No Way Jose was also released during budget cuts. He wrestled for a long time on the main roster and NXT, but throughout that time he was not really able to make his mark. Now he's taking bookings under the name Levy Valenz. Curtis Axel spent the last part of his WWE career alongside Bo Dallas as the Mr. Raj. They were somewhat successful as the B-team after they separated from Miz. They even won the Raw Tag Team titles before losing them to Ziggler and McIntyre. While Bo is in WWE not appearing on programming, Axel has been released ending his 13-year run. Aiden English had an entertaining run in WWE, especially when he teamed with Rusev, though the two ended up getting separated. Then English joined the 205 Live commentary team. He wrestled a few more matches, but spent most of his time calling them. Eventually, he was released in April. During 2020, it looked like Rowan was about to receive a push even after his run with Daniel Bryan, and he started to come out to the ring while holding a cage. For weeks, it was not explained, but something was inside. Finally, it was revealed to be a giant spider, but soon after, the cage and the contents were crushed by McIntyre as Rowan lost to him. Eventually, after that, he'd be released during the budget cuts. He's taken the name Eric Redbeard and was announced for the UWN World Title Tournament. Cassius Ono was another release during the pandemic, although this was not announced. He confirmed his release, posting a picture of his boots as Cassius Ono alone in the ring, then posted a video where he was set to return as Chris Hero. Rusev was obviously capable in the ring, but there were issues surrounding him backstage in WWE. The company did not appreciate him and Lana coming out about their engagement when they were not together on TV, and as a result, their original push went away. Despite being an extraordinary babyface in WWE with Aiden English, Rusev was made to be a heel. As a result, Rusev was unhappy. When the time came in 2020 for the company White Cuts, he was gone. Now he's on Twitch and has joined AEW, being Kip Sabian's best man. WWE legend Matt Hardy was not getting the push he wanted. Not only did WWE not use his broken character in the best way, they did not want him to be in the ring due to his history of injuries. Matt was not ready for a backstage role, and he did not re-sign his contract leaving in March. He ended up in AEW just as the pandemic hit, and while it was a big movie, did not have the best run, being at the wrong end of injuries, including a concussion at All Out. Now he has won an Elite Deletion match at Full Gear, and he may be hinting at a new gimmick. And these were the wrestlers released by WWE in 2020. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.